Welcome, everybody, to Dopamine Dives. Today, we are going to talk about forget-me-nots. Today's video starts with plant facts leading into flower meanings and some history, and then the all-important, can we eat it? I also added in a little bit on what supplies I'm using, and if you would like a little extra dose of history, then stick around until the end of the video or check those timestamps in the description down below. If that sounds like something you may enjoy, then stay tuned for this video. Thanks for watching. The Alpine Forget-Me-Not, Myosotis alpestris. Forget-me-not flowers are part of a large family and have many varieties worldwide, up to 74 according to the Farmer's Almanac. Scorpion grass and mouse's ear are some of the alternate names that I found, other than the geographic locational ones like Chinese forget-me-not. Some varieties live in extreme environments and have created adaptations to accommodate for it. Some seeds can stay dormant in soil for up to 30 years before they germinate. They are a biennial plant, meaning the plant matures in its second year of growth, just like raspberries. The blossoms have five identical rounded spade-shaped petals that fuse into a center tube. The center of the flower has a bright yellow circle descending into the very dark center that gives it its very distinct look. The flower tends to be blue, ranging from bright blue to light sky blue. There are some varieties that come in white and pink as well. The flowers grow in clusters of five flowers, and the blossom clusters are held up by a pretty weak, slender stem with hairs on it. The plant stands anywhere from 5 to 12 inches and found in mountain meadows and blooms in the midsummer from late June to July. The forget-me-not flower is filled with symbolism and lore. Through visual representation or the act of giving, forget-me-nots symbolize respect, true love, and the promise to always remember. Get it? Forget me not? Anyways. Fidelity and faithfulness are also represented with forget me not blossoms. My favorite forget me not meaning that I found was perseverance. Since it's a plant found on the high subalpine meadows between 7,500 feet and 10,000 feet, I thought it was pretty fitting. With short summers and extreme temperatures possible at any time of the year, the residents of the Alpine really are symbols of perseverance. This small iconic flower is known and used as an icon or an emblem worldwide. In Alaska, it's existed as an emblem since at least 1917. The forget-me-not even helped to inspire the background color of the Alaska state flag. In 1926, the Alaska Territorial Governor, George Parks, was in Washington, D.C. He was working towards getting Alaska its statehood, and he saw 48 state flags flying outside of the old post office building and decided Alaska needed a flag. So when he returned, he convinced the Alaska American Legion to hold a contest. The contest was held for 7th through 12th graders all over the state of Alaska to design a flag for the territory. A 7th grader at the Seward Territorial School created the winning design. It was 14-year-old Benny Benson, who won out of the 142 submissions. In his submission, he stated that the blue Alaska sky and the forget-me-not flowers influenced the blue background of his design. When Alaska did become an official state in 1959, Benny Benson's flag design was kept and the forget-me-not adopted as the official state flower and the floral emblem. Okay, now down to the most important plant question. Can we eat it? The answer is... Mostly yes. 
the Chinese forget-me-not and the broadleaf forget-me-not are considered mildly toxic, but the alpine forget-me-not, which is the one I've been covering, and many of, the, many of the other varieties are edible. The flowers can be used fresh in salads or to decorate dishes and desserts. The it can also they've been candied. I I saw some really cool recipes actually. I might try some if I can find some. Um, the U.S. Forest Service even mentions the Forget Me Nots therapeutic properties. Some varieties contain oils that have been used as a diaphoretic and induce sweating or as an antidote for various poisons. A poultice can be even made and used as an astringent for wounds to help tighten tissues. Not a bad piece of advice for the Alaska backcountry and high alpine plants. <laughs> um, plants are just awesome. Do you have any fun forget-me-not facts? Please feel free to mention it in the comments down below. I feel like this video is starting in the right direction of what I'm after on this channel. A mixture of art, storytelling, and fun facts while referencing historical and applicable knowledge while hopefully being visually entertaining with art, instructional activities, and footage of life. Well, thanks for joining me as I figure out how to do what I want this all to go on. <laughs> thanks for joining me. And whether that's art, cooking, foraging, harvesting, or exploring, it's all a big part of my life. So thanks again for watching. Hit that like button if this is heading in the right direction for you. And, uh, or some advice. Cool. Stay inspired, everybody. Thank you. I found these little window cards at Michael's this last year, and they just, I really enjoy them. They're not as daunting as doing an entire card for me, and I really like the way that they frame out the piece. So they're the ones that I'm using right now and I really like them because people can frame them a little easier. They look like they're matted already. Um, so yeah, they're what I'm using in this video. The watercolor pens that I'm using, I think are called Mondo Llamas. Uh, they were gifted to me, so I do not know what they run. You'll have to look them up if you're interested. I can tell that they are a little bit on the cheaper end, and that's only when I'm using a water wash on them. If you want to just use them in a paint marker type style without necessarily doing washes, they work really well. Uh, my advice when adding water is to know that the colors are going to separate. If it's a green, you're more likely to get that kind of separation of kind of the blues out of it and purples kind of separate out into the reds and blues. So they just, they separate like cheap watercolors, which I'm very used to using. Um, just don't expect them to work the same. So that would be my advice. And thoughts. The ink pens I'm using are Micron's. I'm a huge fan of them. I like that they're archival and the tips tend to work really well for what I use them for. They do great detail and I'm a huge fan of the 005. I definitely preferred the last card to the others and noticed a few things wrong with my designs once I was finished. Some of my designs, I'm going to say, some natural occurrences have happened because they have either less or more than five flowers. That's that's fine. Um, the washes themselves, they did okay. I think I did better with it at the end, but always a learning curve. I say I've definitely learned with watercolor to move on. Do what you learned 
on the next one to just keep going. Don't go back. You'll just mess it all up. So that would be my advice on that. And yeah, thank you for watching. Welcome to an extended edition of Dopamine Dives. I ran into another dopamine dive while doing this dopamine dive, so I'm gonna add the little bit on the end of this. It's about Benny Benson. I thought he was very interesting and truly Alaskan individual, and I just wanted to talk a little bit more about him because I thought it was cool. So if you are interested in learning a little bit more about an Alaskan a true Alaskan story, then stay tuned for the rest of this video. I wanted to add on this little bonus info about Benny Benson on the end for anyone who's interested. He was just such an Alaskan individual and a product of his time. If you watch the video of him on the Alaska State Museum website, I'll link it down below, he tells his extraordinary story in a very common, nonchalant, Alaskan way. If you do find yourself on that website, I also highly recommend watching the video on the curator, India, Sp uh, India Sparts. I was very thankful to find this resource. Several bits of information I found were contradictory, and I was getting frustrated. And then I came across something on the state's website about Benny Benson donating his original flag and the pocket watch that was part of his original contest winnings. He donated them to the Alaska State Museum. So then I went to their website and ta-da! Like, my jaw dropped when I realized I could watch him in his own mannerisms and voice. Like, I could, I could hear Benny Benson's story from his own mouth. It was just, it was way cool. While I discuss Benny Benson, there will be a slideshow of some of the other drawing submissions submitted by kids around the territory for the flag competition as well, which I thought were just really cool. So, enjoy! In 1913, John Ben Benson, known as Benny, was born in Chignik Village in the Alaska Territory. He... His mother, Tatiana, was Unanga and Russian, and his fisherman father was Swedish. Benny had both a sister and a brother. Tragically, when he was three years old, his mother died. She caught pneumonia and wasn't able to overcome the sickness, along with many others in their village. Not long after this, the family's house burnt down. His father was unable to care for the three children, so he sent Benny's sister to a school in the Lower 48, and the boys were taken to a mission school in Unalaska. While their father went to work, the kids were taken care of at school. The mission school was called the Jesse Lee Home, and it outgrew its facilities and needed more mainland access, so the mission school moved to Seward, Alaska, and soon after that, the Alaska American Legion held the contest for the Alaska state flag design. There were several submissions for the flag contest from the Seward school, and several from Benny Benson. Here's one of his other designs to go and I think the next one is also his. In the description on his winning design, Benny wrote, The blue field is for the Alaska sky, and the forget-me-not, an Alaskan flower. The north star is for the future of the state of Alaska, the most northerly in the Union. The dipper is for the great bear, symbolizing strength. Benny's design won, and he was awarded a watch with the flag emblem on it, and a thousand dollar scholarship. After leaving the mission home, Benny and his brother went to work with their dad. He went wor and worked on fishing boats in the Bering Sea and the Bristol Bay. He used that $1,000 scholarship later to study diesel mechanics and worked in various fields doing that as well. Later, he moved to Kodiak and met people who were into planes. Benny Benson donated his original blue silk and hand-sewn gold star flag along with the watch to the Alaska State Museum in 1963. 
He passed away in Kodiak at the age of 59 in 1972 due to a heart attack. Benny Benson made a lasting impact on multiple communities around the state. And in the 1971 filmed interview of him that I found on the Alaska Museum site, he mentioned how much Alaska had given to him as well. He mentioned things like visiting communities all over Alaska and watching the moon landing. He got to watch his flag design go to the moon and be the only one to do so since all the other flag design like designers and creators were non-existent at that point. They were dead long before the moon landing ever took place. Benny Benson, he's remembered around the state and memorialized in many ways. There's Benny Benson Drive in Kodiak. Anchorage also sports a Benny Benson Boulevard and high school. Alaska Plant Materials Center released a variety of Kodiak wild grass named Benson Beach Wild Rye. Among many other honors and remembrances around the state, I, I really hope his story does continue because he was just, you know, a real dude. And it's kind of cool that it wasn't some, like, guy that existed however long ago that none of us necessarily know about anymore. So... That's my deep dive. My deep, deep dive, I guess. I don't know. If you found this interesting, hit that like button below. Use the comments for any questions, and I'll hopefully get back to you. Until the next dopamine dive, I'm Kyleen. Have a great one, and stay inspired. Welcome to an extended edition. An extended edition. <laughs> the Alpine Forget Me Not Myosotis Alpestritis. Myosotis Alpestris. Myosotis Alpestris. Myosotis Alpestris. Abda and have created Ada <laughs> Some varieties live in extreme in <clears throat> start that one. some varieties. The flower tends to be bright blue, ranging from like the whole spectrum of blue <laughs> and